How can robots help to explore inhospitable areas that are dangerous and difficult for us humans to reach? The first lunar rover recorded data on the Moon in 1970, a year before the first humans set foot on the surface of the Moon. These first rovers were quite successful. But what if it were no longer individual robots collecting data, but teams of autonomous robots working together to carry out complex missions? What new possibilities and opportunities would that open up? Cooperative robotic teams would not only be very useful in space, but also down here on Earth. There are many tasks that can be very dangerous for humans and thus require robotic helpers. Exploring mine shafts that hold explosives is just one example. Corop X stands for Cooperative Robots for Extreme Environments. In the Corop X team, each robot had to be autonomous, that is intelligent enough to make decisions and to know where to go and how to reach its destination. Moreover, the robots had to be able to cooperate to reach their goals. To achieve the ambitious goals of Corop X, we assembled robotics experts from nine organizations and five European member states. Within 24 months, we built two robot teams designed to explore a lava tube on the moon, as well as a mine shaft on Earth. Fortunately, we did not have to start from scratch. We could use space robotics technologies that had been developed over the last decade in a number of EU and nationally funded projects. We took these technology building blocks, improved them and adapted them to our mission scenario. Finally, we tested our technologies in a lunar analog mission here on Lanzarote and in a terrestrial demonstration on the Spanish peninsula. Why Lanzarote? The volcanic island of Lanzarote offered suitable lava tubes to test our lunar mission here on Earth. Lava tubes are underground caves that form when molten lava undercuts already hardened lava rock. On the Moon and on Mars, these caves are very exciting from a scientific point of view. In addition, extraterrestrial lava tubes are also very practical. They offer large, naturally protected cavities where equipment can be stored and astronauts can live. This is why ESA, NASA and other space agencies are keen to explore the lava tubes on the Moon. When you bring things in a real environment, here is a lava tube like the one that we expect to see in the Moon, formed by the same mechanism we see on the Moon. And here we can experience the full variability of the conditions that nature creates. And here we can test the robustness of uh, engineering systems that have to work in extreme situations. Extreme situations, extreme environmental conditions. That's what our robots are made for. This is why we called one of them Coyote, like the small, highly adaptable animal with strongly developed social behavior. The other was Sherpa TT, named after the strong and tough Nepalese mountain guides. The third one, Lufmi X, was specifically developed to detect water on the moon. Let's have a closer look on their joint mission. Our lunar analog mission had four phases. In mission phase one, the three robots explored the surface of the lava tube near the entry hole. They used their onboard sensors to scan the area to create a detailed map of the area. Coyote had a special ground penetrating radar on board to probe into the subsurface to identify the location of the tube. In mission phase two, LUMIX deployed a sensor cube into the entry hole, also known as the skylight. The cube is equipped with a high-speed camera that collects images on their way down. Based on these images, a detailed 3D model of the skylight and the lava tube below can be created. This model can be used to plan the next steps of the robot team. Space Application Services is a Belgian company uh, which is a part of the Corobex project. 
We provide the Love Me rover, uh, which is a small to medium sized rover with multiple sensors as well as uh, computational units. The rover has uh, the capability in order to perform, cooperate with the other robots from DFKI to perform a cooperative mapping of the area. We also provide um, the communication system, which is a mesh communication for all the robots to interact with each other and with the control center. We also provide the control center and the computational unit on the robot in order to let partners integrate their perception and guidance software. Mission phase three was probably the most difficult one. The Coyote rover needed to enter the lava tube through the entry hole. Like a spider, Coyote repelled down into the cave. But instead of a spider thread, Coyote used a tether cable that was held by the supporting robot Sherpa TT. Once it reached the bottom, Coyote detached from the cable and started exploring the cave. In the final mission phase, mission phase four, Coyote explores the lava tube. With its onboard sensors, Coyote gathers data about the size, the form, the condition of the lava tube. These data are very interesting for the scientists and planners for future space missions. In Corobex, Magellium provided perception and localization components for all three rovers, uh, which is used in mission phase one and mission phase four. The rovers in mission phase one were able to build a common model of the terrain, which has been explored, and provide a precise localization for each of them. On mission phase four, Coyote was able to build a deep model of the cave and explore it. What was remarkable about the mission was not only the highly competent autonomous robots, but also how well they work together. This collaboration was coordinated by a common framework that managed the interaction of all hardware and software components. In the planetary use case, we have provided software components as well as hardware components. With respect to software components, we have OG1, which is the operating system that is the glue that connects all the subsystems that lay inside the rovers. And in the part of the software, we have also OG2, which is the uh, autonomous systems, which is the intelligence that ultimately controls these rovers and makes them behave in a coordinated manner. And how did this complex collaboration between the different robotic systems work out? How did the European team of robotics perform? And what are their conclusions after these extensive tests in the field? The Lunar Analog mission on Lanzarote was a success. It showed that complex and difficult to reach structures such as lava tubes can be explored with teams of cooperative robots. Of course, it will take some time until this can be repeated in a real mission to the moon. But with CoropX, we are confident that Europe is one step closer to reaching this ambitious goal. Corobix is the last episode in a series of projects part of our strategic research cluster on space robotics. We are very happy to see the project push forward boundaries to demonstrate European capabilities and the journey continues. For now, Coyote, Sherpa TT and LUFMIAX are back in their labs, resting and preparing for their next mission in another challenging environment on Earth. And who knows, one day maybe even on the Moon. <laughs>